Hey, hello, hello. So, I just wanted to talk about the upcoming PP changes because it, it's, it's exciting and I want to talk about them, so. Like, for those that don't know, the PP system is going to be receiving a number of balance changes and a number of changes to it, uh, mainly by a team headed by the likes of Zexar, Vinxis, MB Masher, and uh, many other staff members that have been working on that for quite a while now. This is probably the biggest change that the game has seen since PPV2 was actually implemented into the game from TP and that, that includes the small CS nerf that happened uh, soon after it was introduced. So it's a pretty big deal really. It's due soon as far as we know. Uh, at time of recording this, the star rating changes based off of these PP changes is actually implemented in Cut and Edge right now. So you can go onto the current edge build if you have it, and you can see how star rating is changed by this. Uh, but the actual changes aren't rolled out in the PP system yet. I'm excited to see changes of any sort, really. And the changes in PP, the balances here, I like them, I like them. And um, it seems like the reception is mostly positive. So, I mean, they've been carefully worked on and tested out, and I mean... I suppose what's here has been it's been coming for a long time and like I say I mostly agree with it well not even mostly actually I agree with it actually I don't think there's anything here I disagree with I mean the fact that the PP system has just been stagnant for so many years it's allowed mappers to boil high star rating maps down to a science which means that you know it's players have been pushed down certain routes because it's been like this for years I mean, the changes, if anything else, means that at least the goalposts are going to be moved a little bit. So it'll keep things fresh for players and, you know, mappers looking to squeeze as many stars out of the maps are going to have to change up at least a little bit. I mean, let's be honest, it's not going to stop mappers going for that because that's what gets played, but at least it's something a bit different. And different is good. I'm sure you can agree on that. Or at least hopefully agree on that. Different is in a good way. You know what I mean. Anyways, uh... I'm going to go down the changes and just talk about what I think about them and you know what comes to mind. This isn't going to be the be all end all. If you want to find out what's changing, I recommend uh, checking out a Reddit thread posted by Vinxis. And also, uh, there's going to be a news post up soon. I'm not going to link it because it's unfinished, but you can find it. People have been talking about it on the Reddit. I will link a, the uh, Reddit thread though, where Vinxis talks about all of this in detail to get a better idea. So this is what I think. So, one of the changes that's been implemented is the wide angles change. They're changing the way that wide angled sort of jumps scale in PP. Uh, the TLDR is jumps that exceed 60 degrees in terms of the angle from one jump to the other is getting a general buff. I mean, this makes sense in my opinion. Like linear patterns and linear jumps are harder. The harder to snap to because, of course, when you've got a bunch of linear taps, you have to sort of stop and start on a note to hit it, whereas with sharper jumps, you can sort of just bounce from one to the other. You know, it's the, this, it's an awkward aim and involves more sort of dexterity in your arm to hit. This change definitely gives alternate star maps and like lower BPM spaced streamy sort of things. You know, what we'd call an alt map, a nice buff. It's much, much needed. They've been underrated for, well, pretty much since they've become a, a meta style of mapping. So they do deserve a buff generally. This change also gives old maps with all those awkward linear aim sections that a lot of them, you know, they're defined by a nice bump in terms of star rating. Again, they've been consistently underrated, like awkward patterns like that. It's just always been like that. But I do wonder how players will adjust this sort of pattern in terms of uh, you know this thing actually giving quite a decent amount of PP now there aren't many maps I'd say that are going to become super well worth in terms of performance by this but uh, there are a few I mean boundary of space which is quite an older uh, 8 minute Toho collab from like 09 that map double time hard rock gets a big buff it's a hard map but I think that buff comes down to one individual uh, like linear pattern like two thirds in it's like a big diamond of single taps that expands out in an eight minute map that's I think that's the only part that really gets a big buff from that or at least one of the 
big major parts. The rest of it, not so much, apart from maybe a little bit of speed because it's kind of quick. But I'm curious how those sort of maps, you know, how many players are going to go for those to try and get the rank fix, right? No, I'm not saying it's easy because that map is not easy. It's a hard one, but that's definitely been buffed a lot, and I think it's due to one big pattern in it. I might try and play that myself, to be honest. Yeah, I think this change comes into, uh, you know, dealing with a lot of complex, awkward patterning. It, it's kind of tough to quantify what makes a complex pattern in terms of uh, an algorithm like you'd use for PP, like in a static system like that, just because there's so many permutations that would make an awkward pattern awkward or complex. But I think wide-angle aim and wide-angle jumps like that, they're a pretty safe bet on a... Uh, just generally being a tough one and the way they've handled it here is a step in the right direction in terms of that and making some of those ang like those sort of maps be worth a bit more to what they should be so yep this change is pretty good I like this the main thing that uh, people have been talking about with this change and understandably so is the way that high BPM is being handled and the way that BPM scales in the new changes in my opinion, this has been a long time coming, really. Essentially what it is, is it now gives increasing speed value to streams that are over 200 BPM. And on top of that, extremely spaced um, spaced streams are also going to be receiving a nerf as well. Um, so that's the thing. I'll talk about that in a bit, but I want to talk about the full-on speed first. Uh, really... The way high-end speed's been weighted in PPV2 has been a contentious issue pretty much since PPV2 came out. And I think it's actually more of a contentious issue than the uh, circle size nerf that happened. Uh, circle size, like small circle size, was quite strong in the first year and there was a nerf to it. And I think this was a more contentious issue than that at the time. But now we're seeing changes to it and it's lovely. In practice, just the raw speed value of fast streams capped out at pretty much about 220-ish BPM. I remember a few years ago there was someone on the forums that did an experiment with I think it was 30 note streams. They took the same patterns and they increased the BPM. And they found that it, it generally the star rating capped out, or roundabouts capped out, at about 220-ish, 230. I don't have a source for it handy, handy right now, but... I mean, you look at a lot of the stream maps, and you can see in practice that around about at that level, you know, the higher the BPMs go, the, the star rating begins to cap out. Not fully, it does still go up, but not by much, you know. And uh, spaced streams actually ended up giving more speed value than actual speed. Especially now with, you know, how spaced some of the space stream maps can get, those maps would give a ridiculous amount of speed score. And that's, that's how that went. But now, high-end speed is worth much more than it was previously. And extremely high speed is worth considerably more than that. And in many cases, deservedly, I think. Um, it gives those super speed players a bit more to work with now. And some of the extremely high-end speed maps see a pretty significant buff here. Very much so. Some of the star rating I've seen for these maps go up by almost a whole star rating in some cases. It's quite a lot. In some cases even more than that, although I'm not sure. It's, it's pretty high, it's pretty high. Uh, low accuracy speed scores don't benefit as much though. 95% uh, and lower high-end speed scores don't scale as hard. Um, but even on like super speedy maps, some of the really extremely fast stuff that sees a big buff in terms of raw difficulty. Even low scores like that see a nice buff, although of course high axe scores scale even harder. This means that, you know, you double tap cheese on some of the really fast, not spaced maps. It can't be abused too hard because the accurate weighting is going to be low. But on some of the really high BPM maps with sort of stacked notes, you can still do that to get some, some worth out of the new speed buff. But you can't abuse it too hard. The high accuracy DT players will be seeing some really nice gains, and very much deservedly so. It's been a very long time coming. And yeah, of course, um, because of the way they're changing it, uh, spaced stream maps also do see a nerf. It's not a heavy nerf, just a, a small nerf, so you know you do see less from the likes of Honesty and Sidetrack Day. Um, it's there, but they are still worth quite a lot, but not as much as it was previously. I mean, that's fair enough, fair enough. 
Also, it was nice to see some of my old speed scores be worth a bit more now. That's it's nice, even though I can't really abuse it anymore because I'm a slow boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this change has been a long time coming. Really awesome to see this now. Sliders are also seeing a change. Um, high velocity slider maps are going to be seeing a nice star rating bump. And a bit like, you know, the wide angles change. You know, this portion of difficulty with, you know, slider heavy maps was essentially ignored in the algorithm previously. You know, sliders weren't really worth anything for the most part. And longer sliders are more accurately judged. Sliders, in and of themselves, aren't massively buffed. Uh, but slider jumps, in particular, you know, big, long, high-velocity uh, high sliders into jumps, or, you know, sliders into, you know, tap jumps and whatnot, things like that, definitely do see a nice buff here. So maps like Sabaki, uh, the Hollowing Sabaki, and Angel Honey's Magnolia, stuff like that, see some nice buffs, some nice, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 star rating buffs, and I... I do agree with those, for sure. I mean, with sliders essentially just being counted as one hit circle as far as PP was concerned, this is definitely a step in the right direction. You know, this is it's worth something now. It does contribute, in a way. I mean, it doesn't exactly fix sliders. You know, this just fixes one element of how they're used. You know, purely slider-based hard maps, like gimmicky stuff, things like Notch Hell and uh, that maze difficulty of Devolved, stuff like that. They're definitely still underrated. They do see a buff, like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 star rating buff, but they are definitely still quite underrated. But this doesn't really target what makes those hard, right? Um, so they get something, but still underrated, those sort of things. But really, what I understand, well, from what I understand, like sliders, the way they're fundamentally handled, it's kind of tricky to scale them. Because, like, isn't it like slider ends are counted as slider ticks? I'm not really too familiar with that, but from what I know, the way they're handled is weird, and it makes weighting them in something like PP tricky. I believe they're changing the way they're fundamentally, like, done in laser, though, so maybe you can work more with that once that hits, whenever that'll be. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's nice to see. I don't think this is going to be a big change. It's not going to just push the meta towards slider spam or anything like that. But it does give those gimmicky, slider heavy, technically, you know, sort of maps a nice deserved buff. Because they've been underrated across the board pretty much. So, you know, nice to see some love there. There's also a change to how flashlight is handled in PP. Like now, instead of it just being a flat increase to the PP uh, value when added, it's now a scaling value based off the length of the map. It scales with a hit object count, I believe, meaning shorter maps with flashlight aren't quite worth as much as they were previously, but longer maps receive, receive much more uh, via this value for a full combo. So it essentially nerfs shorter maps on flashlight, but really buffs longer maps with flashlight. I mean, I can't really comment much on this from my playing experience because I'm not really a flashlight player. So, but I can't say much from that. But what I will say is the Unforgiving Marathon is apparently worth well over 1,000 PP for a hidden flashlight SS on it. So, I wonder if anyone has the stones to go for that. Or even just flashlight on its own, I bet, is worth a ton and a half. And the thing with that map is, mechanically, you know, the, ho the hardest part of the map is the third song in the marathon, which is like in the first quarter. And there's only really two hard songs, songs mechanically in it. I mean, but obviously the difficulty with it is memorizing a 52 minute map, right? But mechanically, there's like two hard maps in it, and the rest of it's much easier. If someone got the way to learn that, that would be nutty. And also, I have a, like a hidden flashlight on DJ Pop's Marissa. I wonder how much that's worth, because that's got quite a high object count. I'm too lazy to check it now, though. I'll probably wait until this goes live and look, but yeah. It's an interesting change for sure, but I can't comment much on it, to be honest. There's also a change to the way hidden scales with PP in this as well, and this one I wasn't too familiar with until recently, but it's interesting to me. Uh, I just want to have a quick word about it. But essentially now, low approach rates gain a little bit of a buff with hidden in terms of the new speed PP and aim. Essentially AR now scares off 
the new speed PP and aim. And there's also a buff to the accuracy values with it as well. Essentially, in practice, approach rate 7.5 and, and below will buff the aim and speed PP you gain from a map, which means that easy hidden is going to see a nice buff. And speedy easy hidden is going to see a nice buff as well, because that'll help scale off the uh, new speed value, which also went up. So a nice little buff to easy hidden, and like, you know, low approach rate hidden, like extremely low, low approach rate hidden. Which is interesting, I always like to uh, see more changes to low AR. Seeing buffs to low AR always sounds good to me, but I can't really see or mention about um, what kind of values it messes about with specifically or give examples because I haven't seen much but it sounds interesting I'd have to see how it pans out in practice it's really refreshing to see changes finally it feels like people have been nervous and scared of messing around with PP whether it was due to like upsetting the community who have spent all their time farming all these maps and then just to watch them get nerfed or just worried about breaking the system further you know I feel it feels like for years people have been just scared to do anything with it to make sure the Jenga tower of PP doesn't just fall over when you take out the wrong block right but uh, I suppose Tom 94's involvement with it certainly would give the staff some confidence moving forward since he was the original progenitor of it and also I suppose they counter the upset people by really only nerfing high-end space streams and Apart from that, and that was only really a small nerf, everything else just got a buff, so no one really lost out. That seems to be the, the mantra they're going for, right? That's what they mentioned. I know Pepe mentioned they don't really want to nerf, they just want to buff what's underweighted, which is fair enough. Keeps it satisfying for the player, I can understand that. Uh, before I wrap up though, I just want to talk about my opinion on the PP system as a whole, because this is probably the best time to, right, while we're chatting about the new one. Like, for me, I don't think the PP system's ever going to be perfect. You're never going to get it bang on. Like, even if the staff manage to find a way to calculate difficulty for, like, rhythm complexity and technical mapping and they boil it down to the closest they can, the values aren't going to satisfy everyone because you can't really quantify every sort of technical aim rhythm or just musical rhythm or with speed pattern, all the permutations of all those together, you're not going to get it. Like mapping and how the players can like tackle those maps with like cheese tactics and what whatnot, it's just way too complex. But I think the main thing with uh, the PP system is how it's placed as like the be all end all skill rating. It's like what the players use to see, oh, I'm doing better. Like new players especially will associate the PP system with how to progress in the game. And even though skeptical of it, just because of where it's placed, like they use PP as a baseline if all else fails, right? Like me included. Like even I use it as a baseline as well because that's sort of what it's for. Even though you know it's flawed in many ways and only gives like a portion of the, the story of how a player can play, you know, it's, that's how it is. With this current placement in the game, that's not really going to change. It's what they're going for. They're trying to rate it as the the difficulty rating system which is fair enough um, but as a player though I like to think of it a, a little bit differently I, I enjoy the, the existence of the PP system I don't want to see it go or anything like that no 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 it shows hell better than what we had before in PPV1 and score ranking but I prefer to think of the PP system as like a mini game like a mini game of Osu like alongside you know just the the actual gameplay alongside multiplayer, alongside tournaments. I like to think of PP as like just another gameplay element, like a little mini game in that. Uh, when PPV2 came out and all the nuances came with that, I had a lot of fun playing that mini game, you know, finding out what I could do to improve it, figuring out the nuances, figuring out the tactics to try and gain a lot in it. You know, I played a lot of speedy stuff mainly, that's what I did for that, and I had a lot of fun with that. And you know, just figuring out this that and the other with it because it was new and exciting and it was just fun to do that not necessarily to play that for the sake of improvement but playing it for the sake of just figuring it out and figuring out how to like, increase that PP value uh, because of the fact that the PP system though has just become so stagnant for many years it's made that element of the game just dry for me because the scope of maps to be played to really go for PP is it's filtered down to uh, specific skill sets 
you know, like big DT jumps and space streams as of recently have come to mind. You know, and because there's been that many maps for it, it's essentially boiled down to if you want to game PP, you got to play those maps, right? Unless you're so insanely good, you can set the score so in like nutty that they're worth PP even without being part of that meta. And if you have meta scores, even those scores probably won't beat it if you're at that level. I mean, you've probably heard this said a million times. It's the opinion of a lot of people, but because it's gone so stagnant, uh, that mini game just becomes so uninteresting. It's become so uninteresting for me because the part where you can just figure what works and what isn't is gone because people have already figured it out. They figured it out years ago. But the changes to PP rekindle that. The shift means that I can explore the changes to maps. You know, they're only as small as they may be, and in some cases as big as they may be, you know, I can go back into that and I can like dig about and figure that out. And I think a lot of people find that as well, with how many people are like, oh my god, this map has gone up this much, I didn't expect that. Things like that. And you can have fun with the PP minigame again. That bit becomes alive again. And to that end, personally, in my opinion, um, I'd like to see more incremental changes on the regular to the PP system. Just so that little mini game can involve, well, involve, <laughs> evolve more. That's what I meant. Uh, with those little changes, it keeps it fresh, and because that's personally what I like to play PP for. That's what I like to do in terms of that system. And I mean, of course, that's not really what the PP system's for. It's meant to be as accurate as possible of a rating system, but it's. I just don't think it's going to reach it. It's just you're not going to get that magic formula. You're just not going to get it. But when it hasn't been sitting around for five years, basically untouched, it can become a very fun thing to try and play for when you throw some freshness into the mix, yeah? Hopefully that made some sense, but you know, that's, that's how I like to think of it. So yeah, I think I'm just about done. I think that's everything I want to say. Well, if you're at this point in the video, thanks for listening to my ramble. Uh, I want to do some more long form videos when subjects come up that I want to talk about. So maybe that'll be a thing that happens, uh, maybe not. I want to, because, well, I don't do enough with the YouTube channel. Either way, I hope you enjoyed that, and, well, you guys can take care of yourselves. Cheers for hanging out, and I'll see you next time, hopefully. Alright, see ya.